So what we were discussing was uh, this asymptotic condition and what we want to say is that The point is that we use uh, interaction picture and in this we say that uh, the interaction Hamiltonian switches off in between, okay, this is what we try to say. Uh, uh, interaction Hamiltonian turns on only in between, so it is H0 and H0 here and H0 plus H i over here. However, and this is a uh, time, so minus infinity to infinity. But you might wonder what decides uh, what is H0 and And the answer is that uh, for uh, quantum field theory for uh, relativistic particles, okay. so for relativistic particles what we expect is that the energy uh, continues to uh, if each particle has some kind of meaning on its own, then we expect that the total energy plus right k square plus m square where n k is the number of particles with momenta k And, uh, and most importantly that m is the physical mass. In particular whatever you write has to be valid in the rest frame of at least some set of particles. So you can boost to that frame and then those particles are at rest so it should just be equal to n times k equal to 0 times the just the physical masses 
but if you change to another frame of reference some other k becomes non zero may be set to zero so you would have to from relativistic invariance and provided there is a particle like picture uh, expect that the total energy of the system would just look like this at any instant of time and therefore uh, what we do is that we choose h0 with the split so so what we expect is that asymptotically as well the free hamiltonian should be that which contains the physical masses of the particle so for uh, equal to and now we are really writing uh, for a scalar field with m square the physical mass. So, the full Hamiltonian could be and let us put some u of phi of x let us not put derivatives for the time keep it simpler uh, take this kind of a Hamiltonian density. So, it could be like this and u would contain some couplings ok. Let me put g g uh, g i And we also assume that there are no bound states. Well, if they are, then we will kind of fact, uh, leave them out. Okay, so if they are, the reasoning doesn't collapse. So subtract them for the time being. So, so long as the existence of bound states is not going to change the physical mass of the particles this assumption is ok. So, so the point is that we assume that the full Hamiltonian has a spectrum like this. So, the what is it asymptotic assumption I actually yes
with physical mass. If you do not do this, then the so this is required or this is one way of ensuring and the accepted way okay. way of ensuring this is one way of and the accepted way of ensuring that um, the double limit exists for the unitary operator of time evolution. So, the interaction picture is defined by this making the split H0 and HI and uh, you know how it works so it is I. So, quick recall that in the interaction picture it is I d by d t of psi t i is uh, obtained by H i acting on psi T i and uh, minus i d by d t of any operator uh, is equal to H interaction now there are two okay h interaction in the interaction picture but actually the it turns out to be the same whether it you you schrodinger in interaction picture but it, just to be complete let us put uh, so let me put it like this it doesn't matter keep it simple o i t where H well just to be sure let me put the I here that makes it then I do not have to make any caveats okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, H interaction in the interaction picture is same as H interaction in Schrodinger picture because um, yeah I mean this is what I remember. So, th so the point is this is how you define the interaction picture and and then because of this the time evolution and u is the Green's function of this equation. in the sense that it satisfies um, 
I, so you want to write is simply equal to uh, u t t prime psi t prime of i it, it is something that just propagates it from that time to this time and therefore satisfies the differential equation i d by d t of u t t prime equal to um, and since it is an operator it will satisfy h interaction And this has opposite sign of the this general rule for the operators. So, u is the unitary operator that implements time evolution in the interaction picture and the S matrix is defined as the limit when you take T and T prime to go to min plus and minus infinity. So, the point is that the region where you can set h i equal to 0 becomes smaller and smaller as you go further and further away and this limit has to exist and the limit exists provided you assume that the spectrum remains the same and that the h 0 assumes the same spectrum as h as you go to plus and minus infinity. So, this is the sort of nuts and bolts thinking behind uh, making these provisions. Okay. So, this is end of the recall. Now, uh, with all this last time we saw that the field in the interaction region will be uh, will have more content than the field in the asymptotic region. Oh yes, 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 thank you that is why I was getting confused yes. So, that is why the thank you and and yes I remember that H 0 thank you H 0 in uh, interaction picture is same as H 0 in Schrodinger picture and so it does not matter which you put yes, but that is not true for the interaction Hamilton and that is why I was getting Right. So, the thing is the other important theorem of uh, field theory is that so what we are next trying to prove is as I was beginning to say. So, we know that we argued that uh, the phi free did we use the word phi free last time what did I use phi in yeah. So, the in and out states uh, essentially creates a single particle and similar yes. So, what I meant to say and phi out at t equal to plus infinity create only one particle states So, we say 1 phi in or out x on vacuum is equal to 1. Okay. 
whereas so it creates the creation operator from this will create uh, one particle out of this it is overlap with this will be one and then um, there is a delta function which will give you one. On the other hand for the for phi at finite times in the presence of full Hamiltonian to have more content than this. and therefore we expect that the free one particle state is less than 1. So we set and this is where we introduce the wave function renormalization. So you have probably done renormalization or are going to do uh, out of the so this already sets the story for what has to happen I just erased the Hamiltonian but in the in the free Hamiltonian yeah here in the free Hamiltonian we have a mass parameter and we have these couplings uh, so when we write this Hamiltonian formally we have so called unrenormalized masses and couplings but eventually after you take account of interactions within the asymmetric formalism you have to renormalize you have to ignore some of the diagrams and renormalize the couplings the mildest kind of renormalization that is required is to change the normalization of the field itself and that is already seen at this level you do not have to do any diagrammatic calculations to see that you actually need to renormalize the wave functions. So thus we expect that there is a factor square root z. as t goes to plus in, uh, minus infinity or plus infinity of phi in out of x times a square root z and that z we expect same for in and out okay, which because after all the evolution is unitary so the normalization from this end to that end does not change. So z is the same in both in and out regions but this is what we expect where z is a number between 0 and 1 okay. It becomes 1 if it is free field theory and further the caveat is that the above is not an operator although this is about quantized fields there is a word for it only as a weak limit
So when we withdraw from making the full matrix, full operator assumption to only for matrix elements, what it means is that if you take higher powers of this statement, then they may not hold because you are, then you have to do matrix multiplication of and you get a more complicated answer. So do not expect that if you do uh, phi square will go into z times phi in squared, but phi itself we expect this to happen okay. because the phi squared operator then has intermediate and uh, contributions from various other states, so it may not hold uh, right. So now I want to uh, show a slightly intricate derivation, I hope that I get it all right. So this is called This is uh, not German umlau, but some Swedish umlau. So what is the representation is about? I will tell you uh, soon. Uh, well, so the representation is about the commutator phi x phi y. Okay. <coughs> phi y in a form understandable from free field theory. This is what the representation does. It rewrites the general interacting field uh, commutator in terms of expressions that refer to free field quantities. First begin with phi in could be out also, but let us just do phi in. Consider this commutator, so this is not time ordered product this is genuine commutator of phi x phi y which you know has to be 0 at equal time. The canonical commutation relations say that this has to vanish at t equal to 0, but it is for general arguments x and y. Okay. So we write this out to we have to first compute this. So uh, the easiest way to do it is to say I will split it up into phi in plus x plus phi in my, so we will drop the in for the time being because okay, so everything is in. So phi plus x, phi minus x, phi y plus plus phi minus y where these are the positive and negative frequency parts. So they contain A and the negative frequency part contains A dagger just since we have not done field theory fully together let me just say specifically in my normalization this is D3K over 2 pi cube 2 omega k everything square root times a k and times e raised to minus i omega k t plus i k dot x and phi minus is the dagger of this. this is plus sign and this is a dagger. So plus just means positive frequency and the minus i occurs because of the Schrodinger choice of i h cross as the i, I, I d by d t as being the Hamiltonian plus i d by d t as the 
energy. So, this is what we mean by the positive frequency part and our convention is that A A dagger is equal to 1, A K A K dagger, A prime dagger is equal to delta 3 K minus K prime. So, if you do, so in these commutations, this with this will give 0 because they both contain annihilation operator. So, we have to worry about uh, phi x plus comma phi y minus which will be equal to integral d 3 k d 3 k prime and then uh, all this stuff square root. 2 omega k you can put 2 outside also if you like omega k omega k prime times e raise to minus i omega k t and this is t x okay, t corresponding to x coordinate plus i k dot x uh, times the thing from the positive negative frequency part which is plus i omega k prime t y minus i k prime dot y right and then the commutator which just gives us a delta function. So, this just becomes equal to integral d 3 k over 2 pi cube 2 omega k times uh, e raise to minus i k became same as k prime. So, it is now equal to t x minus t y and plus i k dot x minus y. So, putting it all together we will see So, now we can just be a little um, casual write k dot x minus y and when we do the same thing which so here it is to be understood that k 0 is actually because there is only d 3 k. So, you have to understand the k 0 to be the positive square root of k square plus m square. And the other part which is commutator of phi in plus uh, sorry uh, phi minus x with phi plus y will contain firstly these signs will be opposite, but it will contain sorry it will contain a dagger here and a there. So, that will put a minus sign right because the commutator is in the opposite order and we will and this sign will become plus. So, we write minus sign and e raise to plus i k dot x minus y. With this i always find confusing. So, when you have only d 3 k integration then actually I always prefer to write out omega k, but it would become too long and that is written up there. So, now this looks a little awkward you cannot make much sense of it, uh, but you can be clever and rewrite it as equal to as a 4 
integral. So, you say that this is d 4 k over it is still 2 pi cube, but now we insert a delta of k square minus m square right to take care of the extra k 0 integral that you put. Now, I will just for the time being try that this is equal to this times uh, e raise to minus i k dot x minus y and here of course, you do not have to understand the k 0 as here k 0 is free. If you do this then basically this sign will come out wrong. So, let us just check this. So, this is equal to integral so, you can take out the d 3 k and 2 pi cube outside and then integral d k 0 off and now you have this delta function of right delta function of a polynomial that is the delta function at each root, but divided by the f prime evaluated at that root. So, it is equal to delta of k 0 minus omega k and some denominator and plus delta function of k 0 plus omega k. And now, what is the derivative? So, you have to put, so it will be 1 over uh, that is right 2 times omega k because you have to put modulus. Right? So, it is 2 times omega k in both. Now, if you really followed this through, so that is why I said try. If you really followed this through, you actually recover each term correctly because all you have to do now is to set do the d 3 k 0 integral set k 0 equal to plus omega sorry k 0 equal to omega k here which will give you this and in the second term k 0 equal to minus omega k. So, it will give correctly this with the k 0 understood as minus omega k and the d 3 k signs can always be flipped you know if it here it will be minus i k 0 plus i k dot x minus y when it becomes e raise to minus i omega k times t x minus t y we are fine. But when it becomes e raise to plus i omega k you are still stuck with plus i k dot x minus y, but that can be flipped to minus without costing anything because this d 3 k can be flipped uh, with the and the Jacobian of going from k to minus k is 1. So, it does not change anything. So, that can be reversed and so you recover this term as well as this term, but this sign comes out wrong. So, to take care of that and the whole exercise now is if we go towards this then we have a Lorentz invariant expression. See so far we were just commuting and we were getting something a little unclear, but once you cast it in this and because there is a d 3 k integral it is it looks non covariant, but now you have a d 4 k integral a delta function that involves only a Lorentz invariant uh, product I mean uh, magnitude of k and this is a Lorentz invariant inner product. So, the whole function becomes manifestly Lorentz covariant except that this sign came out wrong. So, we need minus sign or ok.
and to cure that we insert uh, a function k0 over mod k into this. So, And this we might call epsilon of whatever its argument, its sine of sine of k0 function. Which is also invariant under uh, allowable Lorentz transformation. So long as you don't do transluminal, what is the word? You know, you, you don't try to cross the light cone. So long as you do any normal Lorentz transformation, a axis that is positive time axis will remain positive time axis. So ortho orthochronous, okay, which is Lorentz invariant under. which are the connected set. You have disconnected sets if you take the full invariance group of the Minkowski inner product, uh, but the connected one that you use physically is the so called orthochronous one 